Thanks so much. My name is Chauncey Goss, and I have the honor of serving as the chairman of the governing board of the South Florida Water Management District. And I'm joined here today by some of my governing board members. For those of you who don't know, the district is responsible for flood control, water supply, and the most ambitious ecosystem restoration effort in the world, restoring America's Everglades. You know, Everglades restoration is a joint effort between the state and federal government. And under the leadership of Governor Ron DeSantis, the state of Florida has taken a strong lead to restore our river of grass. Before the governor even took office, he set out a bold vision for Florida and for our environment. And then on his second day in office, he wasted no time by signing an executive order that called for record funding for Everglades restoration, reducing harmful uh, Lake Okeechobee discharges to the estuaries, and cleaning up our waterways. Two years later, he's kept his promise to Floridians and to our environment. And today is another major step forward in Everglades restoration. One of the most important ways to fix our Everglades ecosystem is by building the EAA Reservoir Project, which is located west of here in the Everglades agricultural area. This 17,000 acre project combines two major features, a natural wetland to clean water and a massive storage reservoir to store excess Lake Okeechobee water. The state of Florida is building the wetland component just like the one you see behind me today. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is building the reservoir component, which will store 240,000 acre feet of water. Instead of sending excess Lake Okeechobee water to our estuaries, the reservoir and wetland will work together to divert that excess water south to the Everglades and ultimately to Florida Bay, where it's needed the most. It's going to reduce harmful releases from Lake Okeechobee to the estuaries, it's really a game changer for ecosystem restoration and protecting our estuary communities and our estuary economies. When many said it was impossible, the South Florida Water Management District voted to start the state of Florida's wetland portion of the EAA Reservoir project 12 months ahead of schedule. Yeah, 12 months. I mean, that's, that's unbelievable to me, but it says it right here on the paper, and it's actually happening. <laughs> We're going to finish the wetland component in 2023, and once we finish, we can send even more water to the Everglades instead of flushing it east and west. Last summer, we began uh, blasting and excavating canals for the project. We recently issued the final contract for building the cells of the wetlands. Today, we're signing this most important agreement with the United States Army Corps of Engineers that's going to allow, us, allow them to start the construction on the reservoir component of the project. And that's really all because of the leadership and the tenacity of our Governor DeSantis. Our partnership with Secretary Noah Valenstein at the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, support from the Florida Legislature, and engagement with the Jacksonville District of the United States Army Corps of Engineers. Just moments ago, the Governing Board voted unanimously to authorize the EAA Reservoir Project's Project Partnership Agreement. This agreement memorializes the state's commitment to expediting the EAA Reservoir Project. More importantly, though, the agreement is the last step necessary for us to take before the U.S. Corps of Engineers begins construction on their portion of the project to the reservoir. As a lot of you know, it's also Earth Day, and I'm so glad to not only celebrate Earth Day with all of you, but to be here to witness progress in action as the state of Florida takes its final step before the Army Corps starts construction. It feels like we have more momentum than we've ever had and I want to thank our governor for his unwavering commitment to Florida's water resources and Everglades restoration. Now, in case you weren't with us a couple weeks ago, we celebrated progress in the removal of the old Tamiami Trail roadbed in Miami-Dade County. The massive Caloosahatchee Reservoir on the West Coast is well on its way to being completed soon. The C-44 Reservoir stormwater treatment area along the Treasure Coast, right over there, are going to be done uh, in a matter of months. And additional storage is being developed north of Lake Okeechobee. When you couple all these projects with the EAA Reservoir Project, the Everglades is going to be given new life. But we really don't work alone here at the district, and I'd like to say thank you to our partners. As I look out in this audience, I see so many people who have been critical to getting us to where we are today. Senator Joe Negron sitting right there in front of me, I am in awe of your courage, sir. Thank you so much for what you've done for all of us on, in the coastal estuaries, and thank you for making this possible. I see many of our stakeholders here. Your tenacity, 
you're, you've been working on this for four or five, six years. Thank you so much for being here. I'd also be remiss if I didn't recognize the men and women of the South Florida Water Management District who are led by our executive director, Drew Bartlett. Thank you. Lastly, I can't say enough to thank you to Governor Ron DeSantis for the opportunity to serve the people of Florida to get the projects done for our environment. Um, Governor, three short years ago, I have a feeling the odds makers would have been betting against us standing here today. This reservoir has been an absolute uphill battle, but it's a battle that needs to be fought. You showed and you continue to show courage and leadership. And when I'm sure it was politically expedient for you to just throw in the towel, you didn't do that because that's not your nature. When you commit to something you commit, you lead, you make it happen. It's a real honor to be able to welcome you here today and I now give you the 46th governor of the state of Florida, Ron DeSantis. Well, thanks a lot, Chauncey. Thanks for everybody who's here. Appreciate everybody who's uh, the board members, people working at the district, obviously our partners at the Army Corps. Uh, Neg Joe Negron, congratulations. Great to see you here. I know you were uh, uh, instrumental in us being here today. So thank everybody for their commitment to the Everglades. As uh, Chauncey said today, the South Florida Water Management District unanimously approved the project partnership agreement with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers so that federal construction can finally begin on the critical EAA reservoir. Uh, prioritizing Florida's vital water resources has been a, a major part of my administration. Uh, we pledged uh, record funding and uh, people were uh, excited about it, but they knew it would be an uphill battle. We did it the first year and everyone was happy. We had it on track for the second year and then COVID came we had the budget right before uh, COVID, really, and they were like, well, there's no way this is going to make it. But we were able to make uh, smart choices. You know, I did veto a billion dollars, but we were able to keep uh, our commitment uh, to our water resources. And so uh, we were happy to do that. But then people were saying, well, OK, the budget's going to be a disaster for, for this coming year. Like, there's no way um, you're going to be able to do it. And um, in terms of meeting what we promised, uh, I can tell you the legislature is not equaling what I asked for. They're doing much more uh, for, for both water resources and for Everglades. Uh, so we're actually putting the pedal to the metal, uh, even in this uncertain budget time. Uh, but I think part of the reason why we're able to do that is because the state's healthy. We have a healthy economy. You know, they, they were predicting big shortfalls a year ago. And then as the months went on and they did new revenue estimations, they would always revise it upward. Uh, and that was a reflection of the fact that people were working, uh, people were coming here, we had, uh, we had things going. So we did our budget in January reflecting the December estimates, but we knew there was gonna be more money every month, January through the end of the fiscal year, but we just didn't, we didn't count it in my budget because like it hasn't been estimated. So we knew when they would do the early, in early April, actually a week or two ago, that revenue estimation, they were gonna estimate even more revenue coming in. Uh, and they did that. And that was like a billion five for the rest of the, till, till the end of June, above what, you know, what we had thought previously. Well, we're now looking at the revenue coming in for April. So they just did a sharp upward revision like two weeks ago. And we think we're gonna be 300 million over that upward revision uh, for the month of April in terms of the tax revenue you know that's coming in and that's because sales tax it's because of uh, documents and it's just because the economy is performing far better than people thought and so that's good in and of itself obviously there's a lot of different things that we deal with when we talk about the budget but in terms of having uh, sustainable support uh, for, for certainly for the state's portion of these projects, you know, we haven't said the federal government needs to do all this. We've said we're going to do our share and we want support. We want a partnership. And I think that that's what's what's happening today. I mean, if you look at the progress over the last two years, um, you know, we've initiated the final phase of construction for the C43 reservoir. 
Uh, we're nearing completion of the C44 reservoir and stormwater treatment area. Just last month, many of us, many of you were with us when we highlighted some of the projects uh, involving the Tamiami Trail, uh, where we're removing over five miles of roadbed from the old Tamiami Trail to improve the volume of water flowing south through the Everglades. And so uh, the progress, I mean, I think we're either for the state's portion, we're either on schedule or ahead of schedule on, on all these major things, which is great. Now, the EAA reservoir project includes two major features, a treatment wetland that will clean water and a reservoir that will store excess water from Lake Okeechobee. And in my direction, South Florida Water Management District expedited the progress on the treatment wetland component which the state of Florida is construction, constructing. The district began constructing a stormwater treatment area last year, which was 12 months ahead of schedule. And as was mentioned, the project is scheduled for completion um, in 2023. The agreement today uh, brings us one step closer to beginning construction of the second component of the EAA reservoir, the 10,000 500 acre above ground water storage reservoir built by the Army Corps of Engineers. Now we uh, thank the Corps for the partnership. We urge them to execute the agreement as quickly as possible so that work can begin as soon as possible. We think that this uh, project is absolutely essential uh, to reduce harmful discharges uh, to the northern estuaries and to help us send more clean water south to the Everglades. Um, and so we hope, uh, I think construction is anticipated to begin later this year. So we obviously support that and we want to see as much progress as, as we can. So uh, we, um, when we started in January 2019, you know, we said we were going to be ambitious. Uh, we said that we were going to, uh, you know, have a strong vision. I think a lot of people throughout Florida are happy that we're finally tackling this in a, in a really comprehensive way. Uh, but we said, you know, it's going to be, it's not like you just flip a switch, like you got to be on this. And so we've managed to stay, uh, stay the course. So we're happy about this today. Uh, and we obviously look forward to more uh, achievements um, in, in the near future. And, I, and as I mentioned, I think the budget, and they're going through all this right now. I mean, this is going to come to a head in the next week and a half. But uh, I think people are going to be really, really uh, satisfied with what we're doing in terms of the budget. Uh, for protecting Florida's water resources and what we're doing for our infrastructure related to water. And so uh, thanks to the legislature for, uh, for answering the call. I mean, probably didn't have as much support when Joe Negron was there for some of the stuff we're doing. This is a really tough fight for them back then. You know, now we have, I think, a stronger consensus. And so I think that that's really good for the people of Florida. So um, it's an honor to be here. And um, who's, who's coming up next? Noah, come on. Thank you, Governor. My name is Noah Valenstein. I have the privilege of serving as Secretary for the Department of Environmental Protection. And what a great backdrop for Earth Day this year. This is wonderful. Um, Earth Day to me is about environmental leadership and challenging ourselves to do more every year on the environment. And you can't ask for a better leader than Governor DeSantis on the environment, always saying, what more can you do today? What's the next groundbreaking? How much more quickly can you do that project? 12 months ahead of schedule is amazing for South Florida Water Management District. On the first Earth Day back in 1970, there was actually a Floridian in the same position I hold or sort of a precursor to that, quickly um, getting ready to go to Washington, D.C. at the time, and that was Nathaniel Reed. Um, and Nathaniel I, I said, I've always was envious of his career back in the 1970s with a environmental movement um, like none other moving forward. And so we used to have conversations teasing each other about it, and I just constantly, I'm, I'm jealous in my career of what you were able to accomplish in the 1970s. I think looking down on us today, Nathaniel would be jealous of this Earth Day, and Nathaniel would be jealous about how much this governor and how much this team has been able to accomplish and the new environmental movement that's occurring right here in Florida and I think going to take over the nation. Um, again, Earth Day is about challenging each other to do more, and so I can't think of a better thing to celebrate than a uh, project partnership agreement for the EA Reservoir, a critical project for moving water south out of Lake Okeechobee away from our estuaries, but also that agreement embodies the idea of partnership and it embodies the idea of challenging ourselves to do as much as we can quickly. Uh, clearly, the Water Management District is up to the task. I know the Colonel is up to the task, too. It'll be exciting to see um, what the Corps can do and what the Corps can announce as far as moving this project forward more quickly. 
Likewise, the legislature has done the same thing. You know, when we've asked for funding, the legislature has stepped up and challenged to do more. Um, and with that, it's my privilege to bring up the former Senate President, um, Honorable Joe Negron, who did his own challenging and his own leadership uh, to bring us here today. Thank you very much. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Um, it all started with uh, two circles on a map. Um, on the morning of August 9th, 2019, uh, my community gathered at the Flagler Center in downtown Stewart to uh, address the Lake Okeechobee discharges that were destroying our river and our waterways. And we had had enough of task forces, studies, stakeholder meetings, advisory councils. It was time for action. So I stood before my constituents with a map of Florida featuring a southern EAA reservoir a reservoir that had been talked about for almost 20 years but never enacted into law or funded. The southern reservoir is the indispensable component to stop the Lake Okeechobee discharges once and for all. So on that morning I told my constituents that the political fight to build the reservoir would be difficult and it was. But the river kids with a Z and the citizens of the Treasure Coast in Southwest Florida would not be stopped. So Senate Bill 10 was filed and then passed into law in 2017. I was born in West Palm Beach, just down the road a little bit, and I've lived in Palm Beach and Martin Counties my entire life. I was brought up to believe that we are to be good stewards of God's creation. I'm the oldest of seven boys. My father would take us fishing at the Jupiter Inlet, the Hope Sound Bridge, and the St. Lucie River. This issue is deeply personal to me. The written agreement that's being announced here today to begin construction of the EAA reservoir will reduce and ultimately eliminate the need for harmful discharges from Lake Okeechobee. Here are some of the leaders who made it happen. First, Jackie Thurlow Lippish, my steadfast and resolute partner who never gave up. Thank you, Jackie. <clears throat> Florida Senate Senior Policy Advisor Lisa Vickers, who brilliantly translated my vision into the text of Senate Bill 10. Lisa, would you stand up? Lisa Vickers, thank you. Senator Rob Bradley, the sponsor of Senate Bill 10, who built a compelling case in Tallahassee. Eric Eichenberg and the Everglades Foundation, who marshaled Florida citizens, businesses, and anglers to support passage of Senate Bill 10. Thank you. And finally, Governor Ron DeSantis. Governor, early on, you promised the citizens of Florida that you would build this reservoir. You kept your word and you never wavered. That is why we are here this morning victorious. Thank you, Governor. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the psalmist wrote. Today, we, also his creation, have upheld our commitment to protect the great state of Florida we are blessed to call home. Thank you all very much. And with that, I'm going to introduce Pedro Ramos with the National Park Service. Pedro? Happy Earth Day, everybody. Mr. Chairman, you sure know how to pick out these uh, backdrops. Uh, nicely done again. And Mr. Secretary, uh, I, I am so glad that you mentioned Nathaniel. Uh, he was tough, and he had high expectations uh, of all of us. Uh, and we're delivering. I know that he's smiling up there. It is my pleasure to once again be at uh, yet another celebration. Uh, this is progress. Who doesn't want to be part of what's happening here? Uh, as I've said before, I truly believe that we are living the golden years of Everglades restoration. This is it. We're making it happen. And today, we make sure to thank you, Mr. Governor, for your leadership 
and also for your great team. You picked some good ones. It is a pleasure to continue working with Noah and with Drew and with you, Mr. Chairman, uh, who I work with very closely uh, to help make this magic happen because together we sure are. Today, we are at the doorstep of the Loxahatchee National Wildlife Refuge and upstream from Everglades National Park and Florida Bay, the ultimate benefactors of all of this work that we're doing from top to bottom of the system. And very important assets to the Department of Interior and the American people. We sure are full partners in this deal. And in fact, the Department of Interior and the National Park Service purchased a significant amount of land years ago to make this happen, 55,000 acres to be precise. And today as we celebrate Earth Day, we are through this project giving Mama Earth on Earth Day the best chance and resiliency to withstand the impacts of climate change and sea level rise, important issues to my boss, Secretary Hallen. In doing this work, we are also securing our livelihood here in Florida. It is simple, and we've said this before and I'll say it again, a healthy Everglades ecosystem equals very clearly prosperity and economic well-being for all Floridians, for all of us right here under this tent and everybody else throughout the state. There is no question that this project will help alleviate the long-term problem of not delivering enough water to our wetlands to the south, including Everglades National Park and Florida Bay, which we have seen collapse a number of times throughout the years. And that's a big reason why we're doing all of this. Due to that lack of fresh water that those southern parts of the system have needed, especially during the drier months of the year. This is a great gift for the Everglades on this Earth Day and a very, very good reason to celebrate but also to continue to push hard and push forward towards completion of Everglades restoration. Let's get this done. And it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Lieutenant Colonel Polk, somebody who hasn't been here as long as some of us have been around but has very quickly delivered a ton of strong leadership in this work. Thank you. Thank you for the kind introduction, Chuck Ramos, and uh, maybe over DeSantis, uh, you know, Chairman Goss, um, the entire governing board, and uh, Secretary Valenstein, and of course, Drew Barlow, thank you, and everyone who took your time to come out here today. Uh, I I'm honored to stand here today uh, on behalf of our commander, Colonel Andrew Kelly, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers at Jacksonville District to celebrate another major event in Everglades restoration, the sign of this Everglades Agricultural Area Restoration Project Partner Agreement. This uh, fully allows us, the Army Corps, to be all in and fully committed to working with the state of Florida expeditiously to complete the Everglades <coughs> Agriculture Area Rest Reservoir. The purpose of the AA Reservoir, as you know, is to improve the quality, quantity, timing, and distribution of the water flows to the heart of the Everglades, the Central Everglades, and Everglades National Park. <clears throat> the South Florida Water Management District is a world-class organization, and we are lucky to be able to partner with them on this critical aquatic restoration and flood control projects in the Central and South Florida. The federal-state partnership continues to be the strength of the comprehensive Everglades restoration project an unparalleled ecosystem restoration effort. The Army Corps and the state of Florida each have invested over a billion dollars to date to this critically important restoration effort. Restoration success is dependent upon the dedicated and collaborative effort. We will continue to work closely with our state federal partners and stakeholders to advance our collective restoration efforts and deliver on the ground benefits. This is one of the most exciting times ever to be involved in Everglades restoration. The initiatives created by the incredible <clears throat> ongoing support are from many of you present here today who have made this event possible. Our thanks go out to all of you for moving forward to this time when we can truly 
claim the key words for Everglade restoration is momentum. We look forward to coming together for many more celebrations in the future. It is now my honor and privilege to introduce Eric Eikenberg, CEO of the Everglades Foundation. Sir. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, on this day of celebration, it's also one of reflection. And as I was driving up from Miami this morning, I was kind of reliving the last number of years, the highs and lows of those years. And it did start with 2013, as they phrased it, the lost summer, and meeting uh, these young girls, the River Kids, who were dedicated to preserving and protecting their hometown of Stewart and Martin County. Those River Kids now, I understand, are in their last few years of college. And I wish they were here today because their determination just back then jump-started this whole effort, an effort that has, as it's been mentioned, 20 years in the waiting. And I look out in this crowd and those that might be watching who are part of this, the conservation and environmental groups that are here, the chambers of commerce along both the west and east coasts of Florida, the fishing guides, those that were losing business left and right because of the harmful discharges that were occurring from Lake Okeechobee, the major and small companies that came together to say enough is enough. This generation is going to be the ones that solve Florida's water woes, woes that are not only devastating the environment, hurting the economy, but then threatening human health. And when we saw those last round of discharges in 2016, it was the determination and courage of Joe Negron, who stood up and, who stood up and said we were going to take a stand and deliver a reservoir that had been promised all too long. And the president led in Tallahassee. He led, as I said, with courage. He took the arrows, but he never wavered. And throughout that entire Senate Bill 10 debate, uh, he was the champion, and we're grateful that you're here today, and we're thankful for you and for Lisa and the entire team there in the Senate, Senator Bradley, for not giving up. The Captains for Clean Water, Daniel Andrews, who's here, the Everglades Law Center, the Co Conservancy, Audubon, Florida, uh, the Orvis Company, Bass Pro Shops, who made sure that folks knew the importance of restoring the Everglades. And then in 2018, in 2018, we had a candidate for the highest office in this state who pledged, who pledged to make this a priority, a top priority. And as they say, elections have consequences. And after that election, after that election, we were on a path now that has brought us to this day that a project partnership agreement is going to be signed to get this reservoir built get this reservoir built in the next couple of years. Again, it's this generation that's standing up. And Ron DeSantis was, is not all about talk. He's not all about giving a speech and making promises. What he's committed to is seeing results and making sure he puts the right people in those positions to deliver results. And this water management district, these governing board members that are here in the front, each and every one of you, men and women, stand up each and every day for our environment, for our Everglades, for clean water, for the industries that are impacted, for tourism here in our state, the number one industry in the state of Florida, tourism. And led by Drew Bartlett, this water management district is doing a tremendous job, and I salute each and every one of you. But I will leave you with the words that were, were said on January 8th, 2019, by our governor. He said he was going to fight for clean water. He said, we're going to fight to restore the Everglades. And what he then said, he said, we're not going to be cowed, and we're not going to let the foot draggers get in our way. This day proves that the foot draggers will never stand in what is best for the Everglades, what's best for our water supply, and what's best for the Florida economy. Thank you all very much. Governor, we salute you. Thank you, Eric. Very well said. Well, thank you all for coming. Now, now for the, the reason we're here, we're actually going to sign this PPA, which I'm really excited about. I woke up this morning and sort of like a kid on the first day of summer vacation, just with that, that butterfly excitement in your stomach going, finally. So we're there. So, Governor, if you'll join me.
Sir, you're signing here. Okay. And I think this you one's mine. I think that that's one. mine. Yep. Okay. Alright. How many are you gonna use? Uh, why don't you use one? I think I'd rather have yours. Alright, you gonna dig you gonna go? Who wants one? I'll take one. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I'd like one. Lawyers got hold of these. <laughs> All right. Good to go. All right. We're good to go. Right. Good to go. We'll be Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.